Hello everybody, um, I wanted to do a quick uh, video about comparing light novels, uh, preferably these two light novels that I had read recently from the two series that um, are part of the big three. And the reason I wanted to do this was to do a quick video to get back into it. Um, I want to do a video about CP0 um, probably tomorrow. Um, also, probably won't be too long uh, just because of time constraints and stuff um, in my life right now. But anyways, um, so Camp Fear and World um, is a novel series, a light novel series by Bleach. And the Ace novels are a sh short story um, um, light novel series from One Piece. And when I was reading the Ace novel, I just really didn't get into it. You know, the first one was, was pretty solid. Uh, it told its own story in a pretty short manner. Um, you know, we had characters uh, <laughs> like that that um, Vice Admiral that left, you know, that had the nickname of leaving. Uh, it was like Nails or something because she had, like left so many nails and people because she was like a fencer. So she kind of had that point kind of ability with her sword. Um, and it, it really told a good story, right? It was a good setup. It was, it was things we didn't know about Ace, his devil fruit, his crew that we had never really seen much of with the, um, Ace of Spade Pirates, um, or the Spade Pirates, I mean. But the thing is, the thing as it went on in part two, is it just felt so unnecessary. Um, compared to, you know, Can't Fear on World Volume 2 and 3, which I haven't even read yet, you know, you might not be able to say those are fair comparisons because of the length of Can't Fear on World Volume 2. But the thing is, there was, there was a planned structure here. And in the Ace novel, it felt like it could have just been one novel, right? But they wanted to make as much money because it's One Piece, right? And I understand that. Um, but the splitting up of the two novels just really makes it very repetitive. The, the volume two just repeats events we already know about him joining Whitebeard, about him fighting Jinbei. There's nothing added here. There's no um, added material. There's no any kind of an event that is necessarily warranting of a second volume of the Ace novels. It's not to say it's not a bad read. It's it's very enjoyable. Um, we get much, much, much needed information about Blackbeard. Um, his personality a bit before the whole Thatch incident. That was really good. The whole burning of the flag. I think they burn their ship, too. And as a symbolic kind of thing, as a gesture. You know, this is all before he gets his tattoo of Whitebeard. And I think that was all really good. But the rest of it... The whole them getting to Fishman Island is just verbatim what the Straw Hats did. It, it's just, it feels so boring, you know? <laughs> and it's such a shame, and I really just did not like it. You know, I felt like it was a waste of time and money. Um, and I rarely say that about One Piece, you know? Maybe the tension in the recent arc has not been there, but overall I'd say, you know, every arc, every story, every piece of One Piece has been amazing. Um, but the second novel just isn't. I hope they don't do this with the law novel. I hope they just make one law novel whenever they get to translating in English. But the thing is, so to really explain what Camp Fear and World does really well, is it incorporates the different races from Bleach. Uh, it, it's, it tells a story on its own. It's not repeated events um, in both volumes. If anything, it ramps stuff up from the first volume, and it tells things in a very cohesive manner. Um, it flows well, uh, the dialogue works really great, you know, Karaku, you know, you know, being there, being present, you know, at this meeting, and, you know, telling people what's up, and then having, you know, both, uh, Neliel and, uh, Tyr Haribel actually being like, oh, well, this guy, like, his Ryatsu is like, yeah, okay, we gotta listen to this guy, I guess, you know... <laughs> That kind of stuff, like they they, they, they can point out the leadership, uh, the Iran car fighting the Quincy. I mean, this, uh, you know, Grimjaw fighting the Quincy girls, and then uh, I think it was Tsukushima, you know, using a tree, you know, and, and cutting it and, you know, using his full bring. I mean, that was so cool seeing all of those different races, you know, interact. And then, and then to have, you know, Karaku, like, kind of say, like, look, we're going to do a secret, top secret mission. 
We're going to overthrow this man who was set up in the first volume as being somebody and who was there present in the second volume. We know we got information about um, the confirmation that Yurichi has uh, Zanpakuto. Um, those are things we didn't even know. Um, we didn't see it still. Um, but still, those are things. You know, in the Ace novel, most of his crew in the second novel does nothing. Um, there was so much setup that just was not utilized in such a lively world. Um, you know, the meeting of Shanks was interesting in the insight, but it turned out that Sandman, back in the day, did not translate it um, for exactly how it ended up being for the English translation. You know, it, they weren't talking about Ace's hockey having this flame like I talked about in a video years ago when it first was translated, but instead it was more uh, about his devil fruit, I guess, about his internal will, and that that's cool, but... I don't know, man. It just didn't seem necessary. Um, and and I think it was I, I, Isan or I, I, Ishin or something, uh, something like that. Maybe not, you know, I can't remember her name, honestly, for the life of me. But she was set up to be Ace's rival, you know, going into the New World. And she didn't, you know, she just didn't appear. And, you know, besides the events of Wano, I would say that was the only woman that we saw with Ace that was significant. And it, it just feels so weird, honestly. Um, author, obviously, it's different author views. It's different interpretations. You know, because neither of them are by the original author of the series. Um, but the impact on the the story at large is massive. Camp Fear and World does a fantastic job of doing this. Um, I, I wanted to make a whole video about it, but then I thought it would be more interesting to compare the two um, because they are two two parts. Um, but yeah, honestly, when a novel kind of almost you start skipping it, that's when you know, you know, that it's not as good as maybe you thought it would be. So anyways, that should do, that should do it for me. And uh, well, I'll see you guys till, uh, next time, probably tomorrow. And uh, have a good day.